what we can see though is spherical type diffusion for um, ultra microelectrodes. Or microelectrodes that we mentioned before. Ultra microelectrodes is just discriminating against what we used to call microelectrodes, which were the normal size electrodes, and now they call them ultra microelectrodes. Um, kind of swinging back a little bit, people are starting to call ultra microelectrodes microelectrodes only. Uh, again, what we talked about with ultra microelectrodes, the R0 uh, typically could be um, from 1 to 50 micrometers. Um, although our zeros as small as uh, five nanometers have been made for ultra microelectrodes. So they're very tiny, can be very tiny electrodes, in fact. Um, let's consider a typical R0 of uh, five micrometers, and that would be five times 10 to the minus four centimeters. Again, using the equations d0 t over r0 squared, we see that linear diffusion would occur for times less than 80 microseconds. And spherical diffusion for times greater than about 0.25 seconds. So you can see the vast difference we see when we make the electrode drop quite a bit smaller. So if we go from a 0.1 centimeter to 5 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters, now we only see linear behavior at very, very short time scales, whereas spherical diffusion is quite easy to attain and it, in fact would be the normal situation. We would see spherical type diffusion or steady state type diffusion at this small ultra microelectrode drop. And so um, we'll see a little bit more about that. What that means, of course, is that we'd get a constant current flowing that would be characteristic of our spherical type diffusion. Let's uh, stop here and uh, take a break and we'll continue on in a minute. All right, and we're back from our break. We're, as we were finishing up, we were talking about ultra microelectrodes and spherical diffusion. I just want to continue that idea for a little bit here. Um, um, so for a uh, spherical electrode, the steady state current can be rewritten as 4 pi R0 NF DC. It's wrong in your notes, by the way. There's an A term in there which is wrong. And often it's, it's difficult to have a, hem, a spherical electrode because you need to make contact to a spherical electrode somehow and so uh, you can't just have a spherical electrode in solution all by itself. So typically people make hemispherical electrodes which actually can be made by coating a little bit of a droplet of platinum on a uh, support so it, uh, so it assumes a hemispherical shape. And so those are actually practical electrodes and you can find that the response would be exactly half as you'd expect. Uh, the, <clears throat> the diffusion field would be exactly like a spherical electrode except we've cut it in half and we've only allowed diffusion again in this radial direction but only half of that field is available to us and that works very nicely. Actually if you want to read about ultra microelectrodes, um, kind of a plug, and you got it in your notes, um, written by Whiteman and Wyth. A book, uh, the cha a volume of uh, monographs called Electroanalytical Chemistry. In fact, that's a good book to look at, look at for all kinds of topics um, of interest to electroanalytical chemists, but also of just the electrochemistry in general. And um, and uh, that was written in 1989. Well, that's volume 15. That's Bard is editor A. J. Bard. And basically talks a lot about ultra microelectrodes. In fact, one of the most popular ultra microelectrodes is in the spherical electrode or hemispherical electrode. It's an electrode that's made by sealing 
a wire into a, a glass sheath so that the wire being sealed in that sheath now has, when you take and polish one end, has a spherical cross section or a disc shaped cross section, I should say. And so what we have is what they call an embedded disc electrode. We use a K, it's not a C for American English. And uh, that electrode is not a sphere, but in fact, because of the, it's a disc, it has some interesting results that are very similar to what you see at a spherical electrode. And the reason is, is that let's take our disc electrode and if it's a small electrode, small enough electrode, what you see is that at short times we get diffusion that is linear basically with some edge effects. And so what I'm going to draw here are uh, basically concentration profiles like topographic maps. Uh, at longer times, and at longer times, at longer times, the concentration profile extends out in solution, and I'm not drawing it very nicely, but basically what you get at long times is a spherical type <coughs> diffusion field. So even though the electrode is not a sphere, it looks more, uh, more like a hemisphere, really, uh, as if it extended out because the diffusion is a sec effectively like that. It's acting just like that. Uh, this is an example of what we call convergent diffusion. It's not linear. It's not spherical, but it acts like uh, it's converging to a sink. And so for a disk, turns out we get steady state current just like we do at a sphere. The form of the equation is a little bit different. We have 4R0 NFDC, but otherwise the same. If we compare our spherical electrodes to, remember we said there is a um, current, the current uh, potential relationships, we get a current when you're sitting at the top. Uh, in our simple theory that we started out, we used a mass transfer coefficient. use a mass transfer coefficient, NFA, C0 star. And for a sphere, we can actually find that um, um, our mass transfer coefficient is equal to D0 over R0. And for a hemisphere, it would be D0 over 2R0. And for a disk, it's equal to 4 D0 over pi R0. So in all the cases where we've derived some theory for a uh, sigmoidal current potential relationships, all those theories work exactly the same for a disk, a hemisphere, and a sphere for reversible uh, uh, kinetics. And so the shape of the waves are identical. All the things that we've talked about, the Thomish criteria, the, the uh, plot to get the 59 over n millivolts, those are all the same as before. The disk does have some limitations when we talk about kinetics because let's consider a situation that we're talking about. One of the reasons is, is that, well, first of all, we have to have a disk embedded in an infinite plane. Uh, it has to be big enough of a plane so that we don't extend our spherical diffusion field beyond that disk. So if we have an electrode where the edges of the glass are truncated away like so, now the plane extends beyond that and so we, we would start to see deviations from our uh, expected behavior. Usually if RG over R is greater than 10, where RG was this radius and R0 is like before, 
uh, that's good enough. We don't see much of a, an effect. But if it's less than that, it'll, we will see some effect, and uh, you can, it's been calculated what that effect might be. Um, what else are we talking about? Oh, yeah, with um, small electrodes, what we see with a disk electrode that's different than a hemisphere or a sphere electrode is that it's not a uniformly accessible electrode. In other words, we can consider the diffusion at long time scales to be spherical, but in fact, what we see is that the current density becomes much larger at the edges than it is in the center. In other words, the edges of the electrode are required to supply a lot more current than the center of it. So in other words, the diffusion, the current density is different across the surface of the electrode. It's a non-uniformly accessible electrode. That means that the rate of electron transfer at that electrode surface is not uniformly, not uniformly distributed across the surface. And so that means that you'll get a distribution in the rate, and the rate is not exactly what you'd expect on a surface that, say, is hemisphere. In that case, the current is always the same across the surface of that electrode. Uh, and uh, it's a uniformly accessible electrode. So when we have situations with kinetics, the disk electrode is not exactly equivalent to a sphere or a hemisphere because of that non-uniform accessibility. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. It also occurs in other types of electrodes, such as a rotating disk electrode, in which it was or originally discovered uh, quite a while ago. And they use terms like primary and secondary current distributions to to indicate these effects. 